it's Sia Soko, and I have started this series of interviews called The Rare Interviews. It's a part of a project that I've been doing with the Cornerstone Group in Forecast Public Art. I conducted these interviews to find out a little bit more about artists working in communities, and today we have Natasha Pestich, who's incredible, and I'll uh, read her bio in a second. Um, this whole project is a part of RARE, which is Richfield Artist Resident Engagement. It's an artist residency initiative in partnership with the Cornerstone Group, a progressive real estate developer that solves community challenges through innovation and collaboration to increase access to art experiences. Um, the residency is designed to cross boundaries and disciplines and invite Richfield residents to participate in building its more vibrant future. Um, it's supported by an arts access grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board and is administered by Forecast Public Art. Natasha Pestich is a Minneapolis artist and educator. As a professor, she has developed an innovative curriculum in the study of printmaking, attracting the attention of the Mid-America Printing Journal for whom she wrote an article on education. Pestich has also had solo exhibitions at alternative spaces like the Urban Institute for Contemporary Art in Michigan and the Generator Gallery in Scotland and museums like the Minneapolis Institute of Arts. She has been the recipient of an Artist Initiative Grant through the Minnesota State Arts Board, a Leadership Fellowship through the Creative Community Leadership Institute, a Metropolitan Regional Arts Council Grant, and a McKnight Foundation Fellowship for Visual Arts. Pestich completed an apprenticeship at the Fabric Workshop and Museum in Philadelphia and residencies at the Minneapolis Institute of Arts and Anchor Graphics in Chicago and was recently included in the Boston Printmakers 2013 North American Print Biennial and the 2013 Minnesota Biennial. And she is also a professor of printmaking at uh, the Minneapolis College of Art. This whole series is about um, how art and community come together and a lot of it comes out of the work that I've been doing here in Richfield and we talked a little bit off camera about like how, how working with you know a developer or working with a partner is, is different in every, you know, in every instance. Is there, have you worked with a development corporation before? I haven't actually, okay. yeah. Like, I, I know your work through Pils <clears throat> like the Pillsbury work. Do you want to talk a little bit about like that work and like some of the, maybe the things that you might have learned from, from working with Pillsbury? Okay, um, yeah, so Pillsbury and I started working together probably about three years ago, three or four. Mm -hmm. um, they um, asked me to come in and help facilitate the redesign of their lobby space, which is um, a multifaceted space. It's a waiting room um, for different social service agencies. It's uh, a space for the theater at intermission. Kids do yoga in the lobby, mm -hmm. etc. So Pillsbury uh, was going through some organizational changes where uh, the theater directors, uh, Faye Price and Noel Raymond, were put in charge of the social service agency. So it collapsed into one entity as opposed to separate entities. And they wanted to create a space that really uh, reflected uh, how arts was, the intention was for arts to be integrated into all of the work that mm -hmm. they do there. So I actually brought some uh, MCAD students over uh, to spend time. We probably spent about three months at Pillsbury. Um, and as a side note, it was really, you know, like when we talk about community work, um, I think at first it was a, um, to be invited to do this was a little uh, hard because I, I hadn't really had an in-depth relationship with Pillsbury. So mm -hmm. we spent three months um, really just spending time, you know, understanding what they do there. Uh, the students got integrated into the um, teaching programs for youth so that they weren't just coming in and painting a wall. They were uh, working um, in different capacities at Pillsbury so that they got to know people there. So it was, it was yeah. co-designed? I mean, were the programs co-designed or did you guys like, you and Noel and Mike, did you guys sit before and implement them or was it like yeah talk, so the talk design, a little bit about yeah, that process the design of the lobby uh so basically um they had i guess the best way to describe it is sort of like an institute process where they were meeting mm -hmm. with uh people who worked throughout the building um and um using theater and using different things to visualize um what they wanted 
the, the organization to be moving forward, I mm -hmm. guess. I mean, they would be able to tell you better than I, but, um, and when we came in, we uh, did poetry workshops um, and sort of, yeah, almost like metaphorical exercises, a little bit of drawing exercises to imagine, you know, to find some common ground without, I guess, um, limiting the complexity of, you know, all the needs and ideas around that space. So for instance, um, you know, when you think about uh, public-based art or, you know, installation-based art, it's very easy to say, I want a garden or I want a mural, or, I want to paint this wall mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, the question that we pose them is, uh, when have you felt successful or really happy in this space? And mm -hmm. if you could do anything to change it, and we really encourage them to think, like artists think, like outside of the box, mm -hmm. what, what would you do? You know, and it could be surreal. And, and the things that they came up with were super exciting, like, you know, I would like to take this boardroom table um, that I feel limits me from a conversation that I want to have and cut it into multiple parts mm -hmm. so that I can move freely around this room. Or I would like um, my office walls to be able to come down so that it's more open access and then come back up if I need time to work. Mm -hmm. So we tried to take, and there were many other sort of visualizations like that, mm -hmm. we tried to take that um, and start to imagine what that might look like. So mm -hmm. in addition to painting the walls, we actually had some furniture people come in, mm -hmm. hear that feedback, and actually build tables that could be mm -hmm. one and then separated into multiple tables, mm -hmm. et cetera. And then, so the, the real visualization came out of workshops with the staff, um, really talking about the feeling that they wanted, uh, and then we would come up with some designs responding to that, mm -hmm. and then they would um, bring their input in again. The painted columns that you'll see at Pillsbury, there's words embedded in them. All of those words came out of the poetry workshop. They're really hard to see. They're sort of uh, kind of coded in there. Um, and then uh, the staff and everyone took, uh, participated in the actual painting, and mm -hmm. then the full cycle uh, interns um, that work just down the street that are part of Pillsbury, they actually designed and printed uh, the couch covers that mm -hmm. are at Pillsbury. Wow, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So in, in my practice, I try to think about ways that uh, we co-create from um, a concept to realization. You that's, know, and yeah. that's a siloed part of your whole, yeah, the whole package that, well, package, the whole, <laughs> like, everything that you bring. And it's like, I, I feel the same way in my work is that, I do my own studio thing, I teach, and mm -hmm. also act as a designer. I mean, are those mm -hmm. silos something that you really think about, or you think only the artist thinks about that, or like, how does that yeah. play into like, you, like, authorship too, you know? Yeah. The silos, are they necessary and to do good community-based artwork? I think the best way to answer that right now um, is actually something I really struggle with. I think, mm -hmm. Um, I think the uh, silos um, are imposed. I think they're mm -hmm. structures from maybe an older way of mm -hmm. organizing society. And a lot of the, the uh, my desire to work in communities actually comes from my mother organizing activities more around, she was a, a phys ed instructor, so much more around mm -hmm. physical movement, et cetera, in our neighborhood when we would have things come up. Like, mm -hmm. issues come up. Um, you know, cars are driving too fast, and, uh, you know, I was really frightened by that. And, you know, she's, okay, so we'll take this moment where you're afraid and let's own that space. So mm -hmm. let's create games that we play out on the street mm -hmm. with the neighborhood and then mm -hmm. learn, at, like, to, to make people slow down, learn to kind of face your fears and that kind of thing. So for me, you know, I think going through art school mm -hmm. and everything, uh, when I became interested in... Um, I didn't know what community-based arts was. I went yeah. to that capital A art school. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of my ideas uh, seem to be translated into installation. I was always interested yeah. in space. Bringing it back into a white-walled space. Right, right, yeah. right, because that's the space you think you have, uh, mm -hmm. or that's where it goes, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I became very interested in interviews and, you know, talking. I was doing projects actually about home, because um, I, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, I was, uh, my family and I were evicted from our uh, childhood home and or art for me was that anchor that mm -hmm. kept me sane through that process mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so I was still unpacking that uh, yeah. personally in grad school and questioning this idea of home um, and having subsequently moved a lot afterwards and you know I was, became more interested in the interviews like talking to people yeah that you know and uh, and th the re that response from 
art school, which I understand my mentors were you know, trying to think, you know, the, the best for me, like what I should do. But they were really focused on, you know, the New York gallery scene. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, where you want to mm-hmm, go. Mm-hmm. And I was looking for an alternative. And I just, I didn't find that until a couple of years later in Philadelphia. So, yeah. so to answer that yeah. question, um, I think... I am still fighting with those. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, as, a, as an <laughs> I, MCAD professor, yeah, you yeah. have to. I mean, it yeah. is a very object-based thing. I think I have that same thing, too. It's like yeah. the push and pull of, like, creating your own work and right. and doing stuff collaboratively. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. it's really hard. I, I loved, I mean, when you have those opportunities, like you had at MCAD, the, yeah. the show that you had for McKnight, like, mm-hmm. that was super thoughtful. and. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, would you take a moment to mm-hmm. talk about that? It was a series of screen prints mm-hmm. that were about a fictional group of people that were were doing uh, like a social practice project that collapsed on them, right? <laughs> yeah. And so they were like yeah. ephemera, like a uh, made up ephemera of right. of the incident, yeah. right? Yeah, like, exactly. I, I mean, I yeah. think that's brilliant. It's like, how do you, yeah. it was so complex and yeah. I don't know, can yeah. you, yeah, talk about that process. I mean, it, it, yeah, it, yeah I, I like it, developing that. Yeah, I think going back to that silo idea, I'm constantly trying to think of, you know, um, how, how do I bring these worlds together a little bit mm-hmm. more um, in a way that's comprehensive, and that's something I'm really thinking about now, having had a child over the last couple of years. Um, so, yeah, I just, I, I think fictions uh, are a wonderful way of creating a space of possibility, similar to when you change your an internal or external environment physically like it it can um symbolize in a way a sort of occupation like i'm owning this space and fictions can do that too like i'm mm-hmm. inserting something mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. you know untrue but perhaps more true it's like there's you know so there's questions that i have you know as higher education is um interested in some practices mm-hmm. um socially engaged practices how do we um you know because when i think about community-based practice arts-based community things to me they come out of a grassroots tradition Mm -hmm. you know um, based on the uh, desires interests needs of a community and they art is part of you know something that they they have in in their community and so how when a higher ed institution wants to do things like that how do they do it so that practice Mm -hmm. so for me again it's like unpacking these questions in my environment like for instance, MCAT, if we were to have a community-based program in the future, or we do have an earning community class, mm-hmm. how are we conscious of that lineage, where it comes from, and like, what is the role of institutions, and how do institutions need to change, and how can they be good partners? Mm-hmm. So I think for me, it's a way of, um, through humor, is a way of, of asking those questions. That's, right. it's fantastic work. What I've, I've been grappling with lately is, like, I'm going to switch gears a little bit, yeah. but like, uh, incidents like the Jam- Jamar Clark case, right? Mm-hmm. So this is a deeply, like, a deep, deep wound in a community. Mm-hmm. And, like, I, as an artist, mm-hmm. like, that works in communities and feels so a kinship to the places that we're at and we're making, mm-hmm. like, I, I've just been thinking about the role of art and a situation like that mm-hmm. in acting maybe in an immediate sense or taking it back and bringing it into your yourself and making something. What is the artist's role in these situations? And yeah, I, I mean, I think art can take a lot of roles, um, you know, in direct activism, um, but also in uh, relationship building, and and also a place where maybe conflict can unfold. I mean, when I think about the strength of arts, it's I think it's that it can hold that space of complexity, and it can hold a space where um, many different voices or perspectives could be active at the same time. I feel like the work that I do with communities is definitely supportive of or connected to um, community-wide transformation, but I think that transformation also begins with personal transformation. So how Mm -hmm. do we become aware of ourselves, like our privilege? How do we um, understand how we communicate? And art can be that way, um, and speaking like strictly with community-based work, art can be that way of um, building a relationship that um, transcends language, like you can mm-hmm, co-create mm-hmm. something. And it's also about spending time, mm-hmm. you know, and it's about listening. All of the projects that I've worked on uh, always involve a lot of listening um, 
and and even through the process of making we talked about authorship earlier like there how I speak and how you speak we might misunderstand each other and or we might have a sense of ownership of something and there's a lot of potential in even the creative process for conflict or miscommunication to happen and I think that that is actually really good you know because then you can unfold it um, through like a, a constant process of you know, making the work and talking about the work and connecting back to Pillsbury. I know his after the lobby, they um, Pillsbury and um, their partners got an art place grant to uh, do community wide projects to hire artists to, to work with communities. Mm -hmm. And they uh, the theater Breaking Ice did a, a piece about gentrification. Mm -hmm. And what I've always loved about theater, a community theater specifically, is this um, ability or to facilitate maybe a very direct community conversation so they have talk back nights where mm -hmm. the community can talk back and mm -hmm. and I felt like that um, that piece inspired a lot of questions um, what are the things that we're still not addressing mm -hmm. through this piece you know um, mm -hmm. and it became a um, a catalyst I guess for digging deeper um, and, and thinking about how we're all responsible mm -hmm. so yeah so that's kind of a long-winded question I just I think you know our it's uh, it's multifaceted it's educational it's empowering it's healing but it also I, I think that we really need to occupy that space of maybe conflict a little bit um, more to like art can um, you know art can bring up a lot of deep <laughs> things and questions and if we can yeah. stay with it yeah. And, you know, um, and I think the longevity is important in, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the projects that I work on, you know, Pillsbury, we're still working together and it's, I don't think it's something you do a project and then issues are resolved or, you know, they might just be opened up, like yeah. they open up more questions. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. that that's the push and pull. I mean, even like with coming back to mm -hmm. the Jamar Clark case, it's like, I think our power as artists is, is in that maybe in the fictional and the multi perspectives and like mm -hmm. um whereas like an immediate moment like that is almost like a like do we do do we remain in the abstract in that way and that's yeah. i think that's the push and yeah. pull with people that are doing work in communities because it sometimes there is just yeah. straight up black and white and it yes. is like there is a yeah. right and wrong yeah I just have difficulties with it because I do want to speak in a way that is allowing like so many different perspectives and it's just really, yeah, it is yeah. a, it's a difficult thing not to, not to sit on your hands in some way and just like, like and not deal with your art, but maybe just direct action and, and it, maybe it yeah. isn't always solved by, by art, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going even yeah, with yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, no, like, no, no, but it's complicated, right? I mean, yeah. I think like, you know, art can also bring visibility uh, to the stories that we don't mm -hmm. hear it can you know and I think I'm speaking I should backtrack myself like I think when I think about um, community-based work um, I'm very inspired uh, you know trying to connect <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, like uh, how siloed I am like I'm trying to connect my teacher to and I so I, I guess uh -huh. I really think a lot about facilitating or making spaces and making time you know I work primarily with youth in mm -hmm. my own work so mm -hmm. for them to uh, just even personally unpack mm -hmm. a Jamar Clark situation or whatever, you know, their the questions that they have, their mm -hmm. personal questions, um, and and trying to sort that out. And then also being able to be the storytellers of their community. So I, I you know, I like to think about younger generations and what, you know, how they're going to maybe lead us in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, dealing with these things. So I guess, yeah, I guess I... It's building, building capacity and supporting, um, but in situations like the one that you're talking about, you know, we really should be asking the question like, where is abstraction? Mm -hmm. in, you know. Yeah, I mean, it holds so much importance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that to us is. Uh, but it's. Yeah. I, I do think it's important. Like you can support. I mean, I, activism can be explicit, and out there, and but it's also. I mean, I, I think communities transform, and we personally transform over time and it takes time and art I think is if we integrate it um, and we're always again asking those questions and asking questions about power and who benefits and mm -hmm. yeah it's you know, so I, I do think you have to be responsible as an artist but I think you you can be an activist or, or make change happen in a way that maybe seems quieter at first but mm -hmm. is supportive um, but I think in that quiet again you have to be really responsible like what is the conversation that's being had what's not being had mm -hmm. what's you know yeah well we we talked about the artist activist 
role because you're working with a bunch of students and yeah. definitely they're doing activist work and but what are they doing in their their studio you know like it's like the the balance I mean what advice are you giving your students in that in that regard like that are really passionate about one thing and it's taking over like making or the reason why we do art like what yeah. advice are you giving your students yeah I mean I think it depends on the student um, there are a number of students now that are really reactive um, in, in opposition to having their work in galleries and mm -hmm. you know the business mm -hmm. of art mm -hmm. um, because of the conversation that they want to have because of the conversation that they don't see happening mm -hmm. um, audience you know yeah. so I think it really depends on the student I really encourage students to think about multiple audiences and having their work in a library or a community center or doing direct community-based work or mm -hmm. there's a multiplicity of ways of of making and being in the world and they can also blur those boundaries um i worked a little bit with pep Osario in philadelphia and oh, wow. he's a big yeah. yeah he's a big blur of um boundaries and really insists on you know having visibility mm -hmm. um of his work in you know a place like the whitney but he'll start his work out in the world in a barber shop or yeah. wherever so i mean i just encourage i think students it's hard right because i think they do have to develop personally you know they're just trying to do so many things so i always tell them it's important you know four years of college is a really short time mm -hmm. um and it's okay if they focus on developing their craft and skills uh and uh, you know, because that's, that's something that they bring, that's an asset that they bring to the community uh, that they work with, if that's what they want to do, to inspire them to think about, you know, not settling for the existing structures that we have, right? Mm. So, and I, I mean, that, yeah, so. That's hard. I mean, it, it really is. Oh, it I, is. I, don't, I think what we talked about before with yeah. the multiple silos, yeah. it really, what power does the um, title of artist hold, like, in a space that's like... Uh, an activist space, you know, or like a, or a, a city government municipality. It's like Pepon Osorio is like, he's such a rock star artist that he can just go in there and just say, I'm an artist, you know, like, mm -hmm. I just, I guess I just don't know what, what the title of artist means to others and like what like power it holds just to put that on the table i mean i know it's a powerful thing i mean can you speak about that oh my gosh yeah i mean you've had probably more direct interface with um government organizations or developers or things mm. like that um so it's maybe different from what I've experienced. I've done a lot of teaching artists work and work mm. with grassroots organizations. So it's always like artists so, first. Like you, they know you're yeah. an artist. Like I've worked, yeah. See, I've worked with churches, and so, I'm backtracking and trying to think of how to answer this question. I agree. I think it's about educating people um, and I'm thinking about artists. Like when I teach my art and community class at MCAD, um, we talk a lot about partnership and, and roles. You know that. The, um, while the artist is there, they're just as, I mean, it's a partnership uh, and everyone brings a certain skill set or knowledge base. Mm -hmm. And then it's a matter of like, how do you, how do you work together? Mm -hmm. um, I, from my friends who've worked with uh, government, um, I think there is, there's a code switching that mm -hmm. happens and there's mm -hmm. like a, also, um, maybe sometimes like being taken seriously or mm -hmm. you know for people mm -hmm. that are maybe used to dealing with things in a more black and white capacity how do you invite the great you know so i um but that's not something that i i guess i have personally yeah. experienced um although i'm really comfortable it's it is i do think a lot about roles you know um and you know i'll usually be working with you know a pastor or a social worker or you know or a teacher or people who um have embedded deeper relationships maybe in the community than I do because perhaps I'm the new person who came in as the artist and mm -hmm. yeah so I just I think we all like that's uh socially engaged art is really a, a community-based endeavor and everyone um brings something to the table but mm -hmm. so I don't you know I, I'm not sure how to answer yeah well I'm not sure that. I asked, asked a very <laughs> yeah. like it's the same yeah. question <laughs> and I was just kind of rambling um yeah, I, I I appreciate you taking the time to talk, Natasha. Yeah. And yeah, check out her work online and yeah. Thanks. Okay, thank you. <laughs>